question is about Sharia standard number 40. So let's go navigate to Sharia standard number 40. Okay, here it is. So Sharia standard number 40 is about distribution of profit in mudaraba based investment accounts. So in some countries, not all the countries, there are investment accounts uh, similar to deposits. Uh, however, uh, it is it is structured in a manner that there are some additional risks for the investment accounting accounts holders, and thus they also enjoy some additional uh, profits. So this is standard is about distribution mechanisms uh, for for profit distribution mechanisms for such mudaraba based investment accounts. Okay, so the question is about clause two to five. Let's navigate clause number two to five. Okay, I guess this one. So what the question is, in case of depositing points um, or paper money by handling them over to the cashier and the institution may charge a fee for transportation, storage, blah, blah, blah. This, however, does not include amounts to the transfer. Okay. <clears throat> and then pertaining to SS 43122, why is the not allowed to expense this cost in this situation? <coughs> Sorry. Investment account should also not be charged with the expenses of the tasks which have to be performed by the mudarib. Such expenses include the expenses of the investment departments and the bodies which endorse their decisions as well as the expenses of the follow-up and accounting departments. Okay, so let's navigate to 3122 first and then come back here. Okay, so this is, this is basically, uh, let's go here. Firstly, when, when it comes to realization of profit, you will have, you will see the echo of similar um, uh, methodology when it comes to Musharaka or Mudarabai standards as well. So this is standard is just taking one application of Mudaraba and try to reapply the principles, okay? So it's not, it's, it's no different. It's the same thing that we understand from the Mudaraba standards as well. What it's saying is that how we are going to realize profit in such investment accounts. So firstly, uh, we have to ensure that the capital is safe, uh, meaning that let's say, let's say uh, there has been a total uh, capital pool of uh, $1 million in the investment account, right? So how we are going to calculate profit? First, when we have the revenue, profit is a function of revenues, total revenue minus total expenses. So we have to first deduct all the expenses from the revenues and then see how much we are left with. So if we are left with something where the capital is still intact, meaning that we still have $1 million and beyond that, we have $1.1 million. So the additional $100,000 would be profit, right? So this is something that we all understand. It's a common understanding. So under this uh, safety of uh, capital, uh, the, the, the clause 3122, uh, it says that, uh, okay, 312, what the 312 says, so after, uh, within the, uh, within the uh, subtopics of safety of capital, one of the important aspects is uh, there has to be a liquidation, uh, actual or constructive liquidation. Actual liquidation would basically mean that we just sell everything and get our capital back or profit or whatever. And constructive liquidation would mean that we will just value, uh, we will just evaluate the current value of the investments made, the expenses, etc., and based on that, we realize the profit. I think you have uh, gone through those concepts uh, in many other share standards, uh, in other other share standards. So this is just a repetition of the same. Now, when we are doing the uh, uh, actual or constructive liquidation in case of a mudarava investment account, we will have to take account of the expenses because without the expenses, we will not be able to do the liquidation, either actual or constructive. Now. What are the expenses that will be included or considered as an expense that can be deducted from the revenues of this Mudaraba investment account? So that is the crux of the matter. So in this clause, it says expenses related to utilization of balances of the investment accounts by charging each operation with the direct expenses incurred in its execution, uh, that any expense which is related to uh, the utilization of the balance of the investment account 
uh, can be can be deducted if uh, if it is a direct expense and its execution. So to maintain the investment account, we may have some expenses directly related to uh, this maintaining of these investment accounts. So this is something we can consider as an expense for such mudarab operations. Then the share of the balances of the investment account from shared expenses, excluding expenses relating to the institutes, institution's own, act, own activities. So there could be some shared expenses. So let's say their financial institution has several deposit pools. Uh, one is Mudaraba investment. There could be other Mudaraba pool and different other pool. And all of the pool are given some shared services uh, 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 directly, direct expenses, however, shared. So those shared expenses can also be uh, proportionately considered as expenses to this Mudaraba investment account. However, excluding expenses relating to the institution's own activities because those are indirect expenses. Indirect expenses cannot be considered uh, as an expense to the Mudaraba. So that's, that's basically the original uh, clause. Now the questioner, he has a question uh, now based on this. Why is the Mudarib? not allowed to expense this cost uh, uh, in this situation. Now, which cost uh, investment account should also not be charged with the expenses of the tasks which have to be performed by the mudarib. Such expenses include the ex expenses of the investment departments and the bodies which endorse their decisions as well as the expense of the follow-up and accounting departments. Okay, so uh, this was one. And then if we look at... Uh, uh, the previous one actually is not related to this. He just wanted to get a clarification of the last line. I will just go back and then clarify that. But let's say for this particular one, the question is why cannot, uh, in other words, why cannot we charge uh, a fee for the transportation, for the storage, or any other uh, uh, related expense for the, for the investment accounts? So I think the principle is same. Uh, in overall Mudaraba uh, pool, we can only charge the expenses which are directly incurred for such uh, such uh, investment accounts. So if we can justify that the transportation was only meant, uh, I mean, it's directly uh, for the sake of this investment account. Uh, I'm not saying that it is only for investment account. It could be shared as well, but it is a direct expense for this investment account. Then it could be justified. But if it is something that the institution as a financial institution has to do, no matter what, if the investment account is there or not, then it is difficult to justify. End of the day, it's all about justification. So if, the, if, if it could be justified that it's a direct expense of this particular Mudaraba pool, even though it is shared, then we can deduct as expense. If we cannot justify, then we cannot uh, consider this as an expense from the Mudaraba investment pool. Now, what is the what is the thamara of these um, two scenarios? What is the outcome of those two different considerations? If we consider those additional expenses, which are not linked directly with the investment accounts, then definitely the expenses will be higher. And if the expenses are higher, then the profitability will be lower. The investments accounts holders may lose uh, potential profits as well or their capital even. So this is something that needs really a uh, very uh, important caution for the financial institution so that they don't breach the right of the invest rights of the investment accounts and uh, knowingly or unknowingly. I and mean, the maximum caution then what can take. Okay, now going back to the previous clause, which we tried to understand that actually he wanted to just get a clarification of the last line. So let's go again. It's under clause two, uh, two which is basically the difference between an investment account and a current account. So it's the fifth subclause. Okay. In case of depositing coins or paper money, by handling them over to the cashier, the institution may charge a fee for transportation, storage, and counting of the deposited amounts. This, however, does not include amounts transferred to the account of institution. Okay, so when we deposit funds, uh, if, if we go at the previous clauses, uh, let's say this clause uh, in 224, it says the institution may charge fees for the services of opening investment accounts. 
so this fee could be like a lump sum uh, of this has to be a lump sum, meaning that it, it shouldn't be a, a variable amount. It should be a fixed amount. Uh, we should preferably not exceed the average actual cost and should be charged once the time of opening the account. Okay, I think this is straightforward. And then the clause is saying, in case uh, we are depositing physical coins or physical paper money, and it, it requires some transportation from one branch to another, some storage, uh, some counting of the deposited amounts, this, uh, this also, uh, okay, this however does not include amounts transferred. Okay, in case of deposit, okay, uh, the institution may charge a fee. So the institution may charge a fee. Now, the difference between this and when we consider the expenses previously is uh, this is a part of the, th this is not considered an, an action, uh, sorry, a function within the mudaraba. This is where the Rabbul Mal, the capital provider, is providing their funds. Their, uh, uh, their their investment amount. So to facilitate that, there is some costs incurred, transportation, storage, counting, whatever uh, expenses. For that, the institution may charge a lump sum fee. Again, not a variable fee, a lump sum fee, as close as, as much as uh, close possible to the actual charge that it, uh, it, it incurs. Maybe by you know looking at the salaries or the operational cost that it has to bear. So that is just to uh, facilitate the payment of the capital or the payment of the mudaraba investment amount to the institution. Once the payment comes into the institution, forms uh, or pool within the mudaraba pool, now the, is the next clause. Remember the other clause that we have just read through. So this is where we will see uh, after when we are doing actual or, uh, or uh, constructive liquidation, we will see what are the expenses that can be directly attributed to this investment account. This is not direct attribution. This one is already done. It was to just to facilitate the transfer of funds from the Rabbul Mal to this bank uh, financial institution, to the Mudarim. That's it. So that's a separate thing. And for that separate service, the institution may charge uh, all those things that is mentioned here. But after it is part of the Mudaraba, and the Mudaraba has made some profit or loss. Now, when it comes to actual liquidation or, or, or uh, constructive liquidation, can we consider this as an expense? The answer is no. Because in that case, we will not be able to attribute this particular task as a direct expense of the investment account. So, end of the day, what is the rationale behind? The rationale is same. That's what I'm trying to emphasize on. The rationale is if the task or expense can be related as a direct expense uh, or attributed as a direct expense to the mudaraba then we can deduct from its revenues so that we can understand the profit we can calculate the profit but if we cannot consider this as a direct expense uh, rather it's a function of the institution uh, financial institution then we will not be able to deduct it as the expense of mudaraba it is not saying that we cannot charge fees you can charge fees if there is a cost separately as mentioned in this clause. So I hope uh, this one is clarified. This session was brought to you by Taif and Adil. Uh, if you have uh, benefited from it, please share in your social media platforms about both entities and share the word, spread the word. Sakumla khairan.